Hi Andrew, I thought I would make a different kind of video for my response to your other email. So, the thing that I want to say is that obviously secondary sources can be a part of the introduction, but this essay is really about Brandon's essay. And you don't mention Brandon until all the way down here into the second paragraph. And it's totally fine to have two introduction paragraphs for your rhetorical analysis, but I think because it seems you're trying to compare Brandon's writing to the History Channel writing, sorry, History web, uh, History.com website, um, you might want to mention Brandon earlier in the piece. It seems like your essay is about what the History Channel has written and not about what Brandon has written because you've waited too long to mention. And the other thing you might want to try in this first introduction paragraph is try to trying to express the reason, the importance for the comparison between the two sources because um, it will help to set up your analysis of the quality of the writing in Brandon's piece. And if your point is related to how far back the History Channel has researched in the piece to show um, the pattern of climate change and the effect that human activity can have on it, um, that seems like a good thing to say. The reason why this comparison needs to be made because, you know, Brandon's doing the same kind of thing by going back into history and showing the pattern of climate change. So I would work on the introduction a little bit to make that connection clearer and to make it also clearer that you're actually analyzing Brandon's writing and not the History Channel's writing. Um, in terms of your question about length, I don't mind something long. Um, most readers don't mind something long as long as all the connections are made. And so rather than focusing on the length of something, I would focus on whether the connection is being made. One other thing I'll say about length is that the more you include from the History Channel, um, the more you have to do a comparison to Brandon. And so if, if your piece, if you think your piece is going to compare throughout, um, you might consider kind of breaking up this longer introduction paragraph, just kind of introducing that the comparison is going to happen, and then comparing the History Channel and um, Brandon's piece throughout within the body paragraphs. And again, trying to come up with a reason for why that comparison needs to happen. I was thinking about the possibility that maybe more Americans are connected to what the History Channel says, it believes what the History Channel says, it's a more um, trustworthy source than Brandon is because, um, because it's published in the Atlantic. In the Atlantic, I don't know if, if using the word panders is the right word, but definitely tries to connect to a specific kind of reader. And so, you know, I'm trying to help you to dig into the reason why this comparison needs to be made at all. And if you decide to do the comparison throughout um, the piece so that this introduction isn't so long and we're not, readers aren't distracted from where the true analysis is happening, which is Brandon's piece. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, thinking about a different organization might help you here because you have this long, long introdu introduction to the History Channel and a, not a clear focus on this comparison between two sources. I hope that makes sense. Um, doing a little bit of rambling in the last 30 seconds, but tr but trying to get to the point where I'm helping you to understand where this piece could be better. Um, because as a reader, I'm going, hmm, History Channel article, this is what's being analyzed, but I know what the assignment is too. So um, I have a, a different perspective than just um, a regular reader. All right, let me know if you have other questions and um, have a good Thursday. Talk to you soon.